Gun shop employees of Reddit, what are some red flags that have caused you to deny a sale of a firearm? Serious. In the times before the instant background check, we just took their word for it. The guy answered yes on the have you been convicted of a felony question. I told him he couldn't buy a gun. He asked for another form so he could answer no. I told him to leave and never come back. Either it was an ATF sting, or he was too stupid to own a gun. He asked for another form so he could answer no. Freaking bold move there, haha. <laughs> I run my own small shop and am thankful to be able to screen my own customers effectively. However, sometimes my license info gets entered automatically into large retailer databases who don't vet their customers and blindly drop ship me guns with no notice dumping the responsibility on me. One case about a year ago, a major retailer I won't name did exactly this and also left out the packing slip by mistake so I had no idea who the gun was for. I received the box during a particularly busy Friday late in the afternoon, and only had time to log the pertinence while I sorted out my existing appointments. I jotted down a note to call the retailer Monday morning, since I was leaving first thing 6am Saturday for a weekend trip. Monday morning I come home to half a dozen messages on my answering machine, all from a very irate individual yelling incoherently into the phone from a millimeter away demanding I give them their gun. After an hour of analyzing the contents of these voicemails I pieced together that they had purchased this extremely high quality high point carbine and expected it to be delivered directly to their door. No questions asked and involving no it or background checks. I called the retailer, relayed the contents of the voicemails, got an apology and promptly returned the gun to them on their dime. Then I called and attempted to speak to the would be buyer, who was impossible to communicate with and belligerent beyond comprehension. I clearly informed them as politely as I could I declined their business, returned the gun to the retailer, and didn't want any future business from them. They uttered some choice words and hung up. But wait, there's more. The next morning an hour before opening time this person shows up banging on the door, demanding I give them their gun. Without getting into too much detail they were asked to leave and only finally hightailed it when the threat of police involvement was raised. Every single thing about this was sketchy as heck. And I'm glad it's the only bad apple I've had in going on 10 years in the biz. If it makes you feel any better my last purchase was online and I called the company just to make sure they had my local FFL on file and it was all good to ship. They were very adamant about making sure that I contacted my local FFL and they were good with doing the transfer for me. I had and they were. I thought it was weird until reading this. I used to work for an big box outdoors store. It wasn't our store, but one in featuring, Worth, we got an email about it. Woman called store and warned them her husband was on his way to buy a gun to kill her. Thankfully she called before they got there and he got denied. No idea what happened after that though colon. Already posted one here but another doozy was sketchy bloke comes in and wants to look at lever action shot guns. Before this things even left my hands he's smashing the lever as hard and fast as he can. I asked him to not do that and had to explain to a grown as man why it's not okay to roughly handle a brand new anything that you haven't bought. He's got one of those 5 year old kids he keeps interrupting us talking cause he wanted to hold the gun. I turned my back to double check price and when I turn around I'm looking down the barrel of the shotgun the father's handed to his kid and hear the click of him dry firing it at me. Ripped it out of this kid's hand and told the dad to get the frick out and dad starts abusing me cause I hurt his kid's hand when I pulled the shotgun away. Having his kid fire a shotgun in my face isn't that big of a deal apparently. Holy frick dude. Finally one that I can answer. I was living in Alaska for a year and picked up a part-time job in the winter as a gun counter clerk at a national sporting goods chain. One slow evening a kid comes in, by kid I'm talking college aged, and starts staring into the pistol case. I ask him if he wants to see one and that I'd need his id to verify his age etc. All's going well, it's obvious he's new to guns. I ask him what his intended per person use was in order to find what might suit his needs. He says he wants a cowboy style gun and all he wants to do is to go shooting to let off steam. That his mom teases him for always being on the computer and growing up a pee. The more I talked to him the more I realized he was just a closet weeboo otaku. My brothers are full on weeboo so I told the kid about how they had a big group of friends who met once a year during AX or Comic Con SD. Kid was straight up starry eyed. 
told me he wishes he knew people like that. That if he had friends like that he wouldn't have bipolar issues. In the end I told the kid not to buy a gun. Save up his money in GTFO of Alaska. I swear I've not had a happier customer. Dude didn't even buy anything. Thanks for being such a great person. We need more like you. Back when I used to work behind the counter I had a guy who wouldn't stop sweeping customers and employees with the muzzle of firearms he asked to see. I warned him several times to stop. When he deliberately aimed it at a customer I immediately took the pistol away and kicked him out the store. That kind of unsafe behavior is something I won't tolerate and I certainly denied sales back then and I will deny training if I see it on the range now. Our range rents out firearms for trap skeet shooting. Had a lady come in asking strange questions like does it hurt if someone gets shot with it and also acted weird when she answered a call and told the person that she was at a coffee shop. She left and we called the cops to file a report of a suspicious person. Might have been suicidal. The lady might have wanted a painless death, and had a past of suicide attempts thus lied to hide that she was at a place where she may have intended to harm herself. Drugs. Had a guy come in one time with his family and wanted something cheap. He had all these track marks on his arms, scabs on his face. And was really out of it. I did my best to tell him no without making a fuss and finally had to say something about the track marks in front of everyone. Not a good day for him. I guess he'd been telling his family they were from something else and they believed him. Gun license photo. In Australia. Look nothing like him and he couldn't tell me the name or birthday on the license. I asked because there was a lack of resemblance between him and picture and a big red flag when he picked up a rifle and pressed his eye hard into the scope to look through it. Just walked out with his head down when he was told we're keeping the lost stolen gun license. At least police would be able to identify him by the black eye. Guy came in looking pretty ill. His face was bright red and he was sweating profusely while struggling to breathe. One of my employees was convinced he might be having a heart attack so he asked if he was okay. This guy went ballistic and cussed him out for bothering him. One of the many insane things he yelled was, What? You got something against red people? My employee backed off and let us know that he was unhinged. He walked over to the gun counter and asked to see a revolver. He immediately pointed it at my formerly concerned employee and said, I wonder if this would be good enough to put a bullet through the head of that nosy son of a bitch we had already been filled in by our plain clothed loss prevention guy who was now following him around after his outburst. When he made that threat I didn't bother asking him to put the gun down. We have to assume the worst so I took it from him. I couldn't risk giving him any chance to load it in case he was concealing ammunition. You never know. He started screaming that he was going to get a gun and kill us all. Our loss prevention didn't take kindly to that and attempted to physically restrain him until the police could arrive. It took four of us to hold that big bastard down. Needless to say he was arrested for terroristic threats and assault. I like it when they make it obvious for me and, hopefully, joke about shooting at school's protesters. It happens more than you would think. Also, don't send your friend you were browsing with to try and buy the exact same firearm that you wanted 15 minutes after I told you I couldn't sell to you. <laughs> Worked at a large outdoor store in their firearms section. Had a customer come in and ask about a precision rifle chambered in .338 Lapua. Then while handing him his background paperwork he asked how far can this bullet hit a human sized target. He said he was buying it for big game hunting. A little sketchy I know. I gave him some answer oh at least 1000 yards. But I'll get a definite answer. Walked in back to find the manager. Who was the only person who can deny a sale. Explained what happened. Manager had him fill out paperwork and get his it then denied sale immediately after. And the kicker was he used his Chinese passport with a student visa as his id. Police were called and they took it to the FBI. I used to work in a large outdoors retailer. I had a man come in for a gun that refused to give me his id. Also didn't want to give me his name, address, date of birth or any other info. He said he should just be able to answer the questions on the background check and that should be all I needed. Sale denied. Sounds like you passed some kind of test. We get lots of people who use us for transfers. They buy online and then the gun comes to us and we handle the background check. One guy had done a transfer with us previously and I got a bad feeling about him. Nothing concrete, 
he just bugged me. A few weeks later, he called again for another transfer. The gun was coming from Alaska, so I told him it was going to take a bit longer than usual and I'd call him as soon as it arrived. The next day, he called wanting to know if I had a tracking number yet. I didn't. The Alaska FFL only did business by mail. How the heck a letter was supposed to get to Alaska overnight? I know not. Again, I told him to be patient. Fast forward a week and he calls me three times. He let slip that the dealer in Alaska won't talk to him and he needs me to be the go-between. That's a red flag. Sellers normally communicate with buyers. He was acting really sketchy and impatient so I had decided to deny the sale. So, I called the dealer because this was getting sketchy. The dealer told me he cancelled the sale. Interesting. Never had that happen before. The dealer said and I'm quitting here that guy is a serial killer in the making. He'd harass the dealer several times a day starting on the day he ordered the gun. The dealer said the guy knew the sale was cancelled because he told him and refunded his money. That settled it for me. I wasn't interested in handling any transfers for him. When I finally blocked his phone number, two days after talking to the dealer, I had 35 missed calls from him. TLDR. Guy was super impatient about a transfer harassed the seller and spooked him pretty badly. Logged 35 missed calls to my phone in 2 days. Reverse situation. Knife dealer at a gun show and a guy wanted to trade a fairly unique handgun for knives. I little geeky, but no major red flags. No problem. He picked out his knives which resulted in a good size stack of blades. Talking to him while bagging them he says he wanted to trade the gun for knives because I never get the chance to shoot people. I already had his info and reported him to local PD and had a gun checked. He came back clean and so did the gun. In the end, just an odd fellow. I just don't get why people would say that. Like I know people can be socially awkward and don't want to look like a bad person around someone selling weapons. But out of everything you can say. I work behind the sporting goods counter at a Walmart. I can't remember exactly what made me think the guy was trying to buy for someone else, but the sale was suspicious. So I declined to sell him a long gun. He immediately got irate. He started yelling at me and slamming his fists against the counter demanding that I hand him a gun. Sure I'm going to hand the belligerent man a firearm. He demanded to speak to management who escorted him out of the building. Comma he started yelling at me and slamming his fists against the counter demanding that I hand him a gun. Should've went to the toy aisle and got him an orange water pistol. About a year ago I had a lady doing the paperwork to transfer a pistol and she asked the question. Felonies go away after 20 years, right? I promptly picked everything up and said nope, have a good day. I actually feel kind of bad for her. She was misinformed, not trying to defraud you, and it was something she did over 20 years ago. Obviously you have to follow the law and just because she was caught 20 years ago doesn't mean she wasn't still committing crimes or planning to use the firearm for a crime, but she could also have been a reformed citizen. I worked in a gun store for about a year and a half. Had a couple guys come in asking for cheap firearms. Okay no big deal, people are on a budget been there so they give me a price point of about 250 bucks again no big deal they want a handgun not a revolver showed them a used hit point karnik and a couple of cars and a count edge they ask me to disassemble to see the serial numbers kinda weird but figured they just wanted to make sure the guns matched up or something like that then i overhear them talking about blacking out the serial number ask them why they want to black them out and if they know it's illegal Say that they wanted untraceable guns. Nope. Told them to leave. Former gun shop employee here. An automatic ejection from the store was when the customer asks which kind of firearm is effective for harming or killing people. I've personally called the police on a few sketchy buyers. All came through with having warrants or issues. My boss didn't take this kind of crap lightly. We had short team meetings every week to ensure everyone understood what goes on. He was an excellent boss. Local man not suspicious at all. I did front end code for a lot of small firearm companies that used NFD and GFI websites to sell guns online. You wouldn't believe the amount of successful fraud there was in purchasing $10,000 scopes. However the worst customer that one of them told me about was a man who had murdered his girlfriend a few days after purchasing a gun. She 
Gunshop owner, unfortunately didn't see any red flags and lost her business over what happened. She was forced to close for investigation but by the time the investigation was completed she had lost too much money and had to couldn't afford to keep paying the lease on her location. Amount of successful fraud there was in purchasing $10,000 scopes. Well do tell. Paperwork accuracy is a big issue. It has to be 100%. If your gov issued it doesn't match the info you put on a form and you don't have any of the allowed supporting information then no gun sales to you. Had one guy come and only with the title to his car. No gov issued photo it. He spouted some BS about sovereign citizen blah blah. We took his info and blacklisted him in the computer. We didn't want to be associated with that type of folks. We would also ask what the intended user was for and led them with a certain hunting season. An example would be okay why do you need a 22 rifle? Going to hunt some deer? If they would answer yes, no gun. The 22 rifle, while capable to kill a deer, is not allowed in our state's hunting regulations, or any that I know of. Big red flag. We had a protocol that if we got strange customers, like folks asking for one bullet, seemed like they were just trying to get any gun, making threatening statements etc, we would make them fill out their section of the 4473 form, photocopy their id, then deny the sale. This way we could involve law enforcement as needed. If we just told them no, you have nothing else than a crappy description and some security camera footage. The one that really sticks out is the guy who in the course of small talk feeling out the customer asked if he could walk out with the gun that day. We told him that if the paperwork was acceptable and the background check came back as a proceed that he would be able to. He follows up with a good. Now I can ice my be of a wife. We had him do the paperwork, copied his it and denied him right there. He was p to say the least. He finally left. We called the cops and they followed up with a wellness check. Turns out he was just a shithead. Still blacklisted him in the computer. I've had tons of people come by and think they can buy a gun without a license. Mostly people who look like they do M. And when they don't have a license I would get it with but I can still get one without it right way too often. There was one time I was letting two guys take a look at a 1911 and I heard one guy under his breath say that's what Terry shot that cholo with to the other guy. They spent very little time in the store after that. Demeanor is a big thing for me. If you walk in and are nervous, most people are trying to suppress their excitement, then it's a big red flag for me. I have had people try to buy without the correct licenses in Massachusetts. Also, if you come in looking like you got your crap rocked, seen it a few times, and are asking to buy a cheap tactical firearm, then I'm showing you the door. Saying stupid stuff. Avoiding conversation and eye contact. Consulting their partner who they were hiding outside. Yes we can see you out there. Some get by though. Husband and wife were looking for new turkey guns before the season. She came in later that week and picked up new hunting gear and shotgun. Walked to get car and shot herself. Lots of bolo phone conversations with other shops. Being near a city kept us on our toes. I tried to copy as many IDs as possible. In NY you can only handle handguns with a permit. So that reduced a lot of knuckleheads. Saying stupid stuff. Avoiding conversation and eye contact. So what you're saying is, regardless of my intentions I'd never be able to buy a gun. These two things essentially define me. Lately my store has had a small string of Chinese citizens on work visas come in, trying to buy handguns. Now, we can legally sell a handgun to a non-US citizen, but there's a lot more paperwork and it's intended to be an exemption for hunting. Sorry dude, you're not going to hunt with a Glock 19 or a SNWSD 9 ve I work at a small shop on the Ohio River. When I say small, I mean it's the owner, his son, and me. That being said, we sell a lot of firearms because we have a decent selection and the absolute best prices available to any customer. With us being so small, we all see pretty much every gun sale. We will personally refuse to sell to anyone one of the three of us finds sketchy at all. If you smell of weed or alcohol, no sale. 
If we know you from our small town somehow and you've got a violent reputation, no sale. The most common red flag I see is children coming in with an older friend to buy the gun for them. If you look remotely close to being under 21 at all, we ask for your id if you're with someone attempting to purchase a firearm. We see 16 and 17 year old kids come in with friends who are 21 24 ish that try to buy the gun for their younger friend. No sale that day, or any for either of them. I don't care if 24 year old comes back alone. No sale. If the younger friend turns 18. No sale. Sorry bud. But if we feel it's not worth the risk. No screaming or crying or but my daddy lets me. Is going to change our minds. Obvious straw purchases. Dude they asks all the questions and does the shopping and dude be. Or girlfriend. Wants to fill out the background check and pay for it. And GTFO. Another one. This is when I was pretty new, and just a lowly counter person. This pumped up dillhole comes in, glances in a case, and points out a kimber. For those who don't know, these are rather expressive pistols. This one was in the $2.50k range. Says he wants it. This is a straw. Purchase behavior, so I was on watch for strange behavior from him immediately. Upon pulling the gun from the case, I see the tag has been marked we had a secret way of marking tags of gun someone has looked at if they demonstrate behavior that indicates they may send someone in for a straw purchase. I go to the back to grab the gun, and tell my manager what's up. He starts to try to figure out why it's marked, seeing if we have any notes. While I go out to start paperwork, I give the guy the spiel the paperwork needs to be filled out in an extremely precise manner, and he is rolling his eyes at me and making a show of ignoring me, telling me he has his own FFL and knows what he's doing. So he fills out the paperwork and I start looking it over. Mistakes everywhere. He put USA in the county field, didn't use caps in the state field, scribbled out mistakes without dating and initialing, checked a box that doesn't need to be checked unless you're an alien. I made him fix all of those things and he kept telling me I'm stupid and don't know what I'm talking about and he did it perfectly, but begrudgingly fixed the errors. I would have shut him down for being a dong, but wanted to give my manager time to nail him for a straw purchase instead. Looking over his 4473 again, I notice his middle name is spelled Benjamin. I look at his id, it shows Benjamin. So I ask him how to spell his middle name, and he replies can't you read? B. I say that I can read so well in fact, that I can see his name is spelled different on his paperwork than his driver's license. He says I don't know, I never use my middle name, give me my id, I'll fix it even though it doesn't matter. At this point, thankfully, my manager comes out, he's a big dude, probably 6 feet 3 inches and 260 or so. He starts asking the guy about the gun, trying to determine whether it's a straw purchase. The guy gets defensive, says this dumb has been trying to tell me she knows better than me since I got here, now you're interrogating me? I'd been taking his verbal abuse for the last half hour, and had enough. So I flung back this from a guy who can't spell his own middle name? My manager gave me this wide-eyed dude, not helping look and tried to calm the customer down, but it was too late. The guy reached over the counter like he was going to grab me and said you dumb see. He could immediately see that he went way too far from the look on MGR's face. He stopped, turned, and walked out. MGR followed him out the front door and stared him down until he drove out of the parking lot. When she started filling out her last will and testament on a napkin while the paperwork was running. She was going to shoot her husband apparently. Whoa. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.